Welcome to Clutch Talk. I'm your moderator, Seth Smith. Joining me at the desk is Patrick McKenna and Tommy Sanson. We're here to talk about sports we love and the players that make it exciting. Let's get things started with the World Series and the Red Sox won it all this year. Patrick, three titles in 10 years. Are the Red Sox now a dynasty? Seth, I do believe they're a dynasty. Why is that? It's because the team they have. We just saw it win the whole World Series. They have pitching. They have youth behind them in the farm system. They have great hitting, leadership. And I experienced that win on game six on Wednesday night, five rows from first baseline. It was electric, just seeing the smiles on people's faces. It was good. It's good atmosphere, depending on everything the city went in April with the whole bombing. And I think for next year, um, it's going to be a little tough with the free agents and stuff. But like I said, the whole youth filling in spots, I see them right back in the thick of things next year. I would say there's somewhat of a dynasty, not the best dynasty in sports, but right up there on the ladder, because although they did win the World Series this year, I do give them credit, but they're going to need a, they're going to need to fill a lot of holes in this in the off season because Jacoby Ellsbury and Jared Soltamakia and and other players are free agents that they're going to have to work and practice a lot to fill those holes during the off season. Great job on that season. Will be exciting, but that's a story for another day. Now onto the NFL. Defenses in the NFL are trying to figure out where to tackle in order to avoid hitting offensive players in the head. Redskins safety Brandon Merriweather was suspended two games for the hits to the head of wide receivers Brandon Marshall and Ashawn Jeffries. Merriweather says, quote, I guess I just have to take out people's knees. You just have to go low now, man. You've got to end people's careers. And you've got to tear people's ACLs and mess up people's knees. You can't hit them high anymore. Close quote. Tommy. What effect has concussions had on today's NFL defenses? Guys, I think it's had a big impact because if you look back in the day with Steve Young and other quarterbacks that got their heads crushed with a lot of concussions, it has now led to today's era where people are, with players are getting so hurt to, from their knees because of hits or other things like falling out of bounds or tripping on something that there has been probably over 20 ACL or other knee injuries to the point where they're out for a season now, which is very unfortunate for the teams that they play for. I agree with Tommy, such as what he mentioned with the players and stuff. I look at Junior Seha. He passed away a couple of years from all his head injuries and stuff. And the knee injuries, they are getting very significant in the NFL. Like the speed in the NFL is going up every year, people are getting stronger. But I think the safety in the NFL is not going with the speed of the NFL. Why I say that is because they needed to be, do a better performance on the helmets, more performance on the knee pads and stuff. And with tearing ACL, what Tommy said, a whole year coming out, that could be significant for a player that maybe not makes them a lot of money and needs to support their family and stuff. And I think they need to look, um, I think that they have to hit lower, I agree, what Merriweather said, but I think they have to do more safety aspects of it. Thank you, thank you both gentlemen. Let's turn our focus to the NBA and, f and the NBA Finals and how the format has changed. Owners unanimously vote to change the Finals back to the 2-2-1-1-1 two, two, one, one, one format after 20 years of the Finals with a 2-3-2 two, two format. Gentlemen, what advantage or effect will this format change have on the Finals? I think it's going to do a big change, um, such as we baseball, it was 2-3-2, two, two, and they did in basketball last year. But now, with it being 2-2-1-1-1, two, two, one, 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 I think that brings more excitement to the fans. It's more, um, you know what I mean, it's better for both teams. I think it's even. Instead of what happens if the home team loses one game, they have to play three away. It could be across the country, and that's a lot for the other team. And having one game, one game, one game, the networks, more money's coming in. Um, and I think it would be good for the NBA. I would say it has a big effect because, as, you, as Patty said, for both teams, it's now even one game home, one game away, one game home, one game away. And it's pretty evenly on the same pitch or ladder for both teams because although they probably, as Patty said, one side of the country to another, it's still pretty even. Like, they don't have to do three games away and two games back home. So each team can have a chance to win the series when they have to later in the series. Very nice. Very nicely put. Let's turn our attention to hockey and the world of fighting within hockey. In recent years, there has been an uproar 
and a discussion on whether or not to get rid of fights altogether. Players like Bobby Yar and most fans do not want to get rid of fights because it keeps the fans watching the game. Tommy, should fighting be removed from hockey today? I don't believe so because, as Bobby Orr says, it keeps the fans in into the game and it also keeps the players, when, when there is a fight and there maybe are down one or two goals, it keeps the momentum level right where they are and maybe even go up the ladder a little bit for the, for the momentum and try to win the game. But also, as a fan of fights, who, who likes to see fights happen, you, you also want to see the fights happen because you don't want to be, as a fan, go back up to the concession stand and get a drink rather than watch the game because a fight's going to happen because the game, when the game is boring, you want a fight to happen so you can keep the fans' attention on the ice and not going up the stairs to leave the stadium or, or go get a drink. I agree with Tommy. They shouldn't take the fights out. It's just the excitement, the punching, pound to pound. And look, in the 80s, that's all they're about, fighting and stuff. Big bad Bruins, as Bobby Orr said. I mean, fighting... There's no fighting in hockey, there's no hockey. It would be just playing. You need fighting. Yes, the NHL, like I said in previous the NFL, more five years, five years, the speed and players are getting stronger and it's gonna make them more dangerous. And I think it's a concern, like I said, with the safety and everything. But as a big hockey fan such as me, um, Bruins fan, I think that they need not take the fighting out of hockey. Very nicely put about your Bruins. Thank Too bad you. about my Blackhawks. Now joining us at the desk is Bobby Z. Let's get right into it. Bobby, skiing or snowboarding? Um, skiing. I mean, I've been skiing my whole life, you know, since I was two years old. And uh, I went down the snowboarding road a couple times and found myself with a bruised tailbone, you know, hurt wrists and whatnot. <laughs> so I, I stuck with skiing, I guess, because that's what I've been doing and that's what I'm good at. So. Very nice. Yeah. The, uh, the Winter Olympics are upcoming very, very soon. Anything catch your eye? Any interest? Yeah, the Winter Olympics in uh, Sochi, Russia. Uh, it should be good. I actually know the, um, the half pipe cutter who's cutting the half pipe for the skiing and snowboarding events, and, and I know he does a great job. I've actually ridden a couple of half pipes, and uh, that's going to be immaculate, so I'm excited to see what he does with the half pipe. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. and in um, the Moguls, um, Team Canada is going to gonna win it. In my opinion, they got a, a couple good guys on their, on their roster. They got um, Mikel Kingsbury, and he's been like sweeping all the World Cups right now. So <laughs> he's definitely, in my opinion, going to win, win the Olympics. And he's going to be trailed very closely by a guy named Philippe, who's also on the Canadian team. Very nice. Yeah. Let's say I want to try skiing or snowboarding. What advice would you give me? You've never been before. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to have to say you try and skiing for your first time. I just believe that uh, uh, snowboarding, it's, it's, it's hard to learn, but it's easy to progress once you learn. But if you're going to go out your first time and you want to have fun, I'd, I'd say you go with skiing just because skiing's easy to learn. You're going to have a good time, you know what I mean? You're going to be able to ski your first time, get off the lift with some confidence and stuff like that. So yeah, if it's, if it's your first time, I'd suggest you stick with skiing. <laughs> Very nice, can't wait to take the whole family. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, Bobby. Tommy, Patrick, thank you for the great sports discussion today. Once again, I'm Smith Smith, and this has been Clutch Talk, produced by the broadcast journalism class at Landmark College. Thank you for watching, and you stay classy, Brattleboro.